Salutations. Today's briefing, SSN AUKUS, Australia's Nuclear Submarine Future. This briefing will cover the recent announcement on the nuclear powered attack submarines to be procured by the Royal Australian Navy. It will cover the types and numbers of SSNs to be acquired, when they are planned to be operational, and where they will be based. The program will essentially be comprised of three phases, which I will cover in sequence. Some key questions, however, remain to be answered. This program actually dates back to 2016, when it was to replace the Collins class SSKs with a new conventionally powered submarine. Then, 18 months ago, it morphed into the nuclear powered attack submarine program. This new program essentially comprises three phases. Phase one can be described as training, development, and familiarization. Starting in 2023, Virginia class and in 2026, Astute class boats are to increase deployments to the west coast of Australia and for extended periods. At the same time, Australian personnel will be embedded in US and UK facilities. As of early 2027, the United Kingdom and the United States plan to establish a rotational presence of one UK Astute class submarine and up to four US Virginia class submarines on the west coast of Australia. This initiative will be known as Submarine Rotational Force West. Submarine Rotational Force West will be located at an established Royal Australian Navy base, HMAS Stirling, also known as Fleet Base West. While an existing facility, Fleet Base West will be expanded to support the scale of infrastructure required for nuclear powered submarines, for both visiting and rotational submarines, and for Australia's own nuclear powered submarines in the future. Phase two is an interim phase and covers the acquisition of three, with an option for a further two, Virginia class SSNs, starting in 2032. It is likely these will be older boats with around 10 to 13 years of service life remaining. These boats would return to the US for disposal as the new SSN AUKUS boats are commissioned into the Royal Australian Navy. This phase is required to avoid a capability gap with the decommissioning of the Collins class. Meanwhile, a new facility will be built on the east coast of Australia to support SSNs, Fleet Base East for SSNs, likely at Port Kembla, south of Sydney. Eventually, both east and west coast facilities will have maintenance and repair capabilities that United States and United Kingdom submarines may also use. The Royal Australian Navy's SSN AUKUS boats are likely to be permanently based at both locations. Finally, Phase 3 will see SSN AUKUS boats built by both the UK and Australia. A new design, it is essentially a British SSNR, but with US fire control systems, sensors and weapons from the US. We should expect Australia's SSN AUKUS boats to be able to fire all non-nuclear US weapons. Australia and the United Kingdom intend to start building SSN AUKUS boats in their domestic shipyards before the end of this decade. The United Kingdom intends to deliver its first SSN AUKUS boat to the Royal Navy in the late 2030s, with Australia to de develop the first Australian-built SSN AUKUS to the Royal Australian Navy in early 2040s. Note, Australia has committed to a proportionate financial investment in the United Kingdom submarine industrial base to accelerate production of SSN AUKUS boats. In summary, Australia appears to have adopted a three-phase approach, one of which is forced due to timing issues. One, training, development and familiarisation phase to gain knowledge and increase experience of working on SSNs and supporting SSNs ashore. Two, acquire a small number of between three and possibly up to five existing US Virginia class SSNs to avoid a capability gap with the dummy commissioning of the Collins class SSKs with the benefit that these boats will have a similar combat system and weapons as the eventual SSN AUKUS boats. This is not an ideal situation, but is a required step. Three, build in Australia SSN AUKUS boats, which essentially is a British SSN with US equipment and sensors. 
There are, however, some questions to be answered. How many SSN AUKUS boats will the Royal Australian Navy eventually get? What will the total cost of the program be? And what are the disposal costs? Hopefully more details will be provided in the forthcoming Defence Strategic Review. That concludes today's briefing. Thank you for watching. Happy to take suggestions for future briefings from subscribers, so please subscribe, like and share. Until next time, Vale de Cerro.